Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the adventures of Danny and Mike. This is a live podcast. Let's get him out of here. Mr. Danny Tamborelli. That's him. That's him right there. And Mr. Michael C. Morona. Drinking a Coke. There he the is. Coca-Cola has taken him away. Wow, you got a scarf on and everything? Yeah, I'm chilly. Did Liverpool win? Liverpool did win. Look at you. I'm very proud of you. I'm chilly. Okay. You're was, allowed to be chilly, man. It, it was, uh, it's a fall transition thing. <laughs> Your scarf is a fall transition thing? Yeah. Does Mother Nature know that? No, no. it's 60 fucking degrees in New York City. No, that's the point. It's like we were all questing, and you have to get like six items to make the season transition from summer to fall. I just found the scarf. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. I already found. I already had the pumpkin spice latte. I had the shoes. I had this. I had that. But I found the scarf, and now it's fall. <laughs> I want to call. I just want to call you basic. Is that how the kids use that term? Is that? Did I do that right? Yes. Hot damn, thirty-five my ass. <laughs> uh, well. I'm a little chilly too, but that's because I've only just started eating solid foods today. Were you? Don't worry, guys. I was on a juice cleanse. It wasn't anything serious. Oh, you didn't have dysentery? No, no, <laughs> no dysentery. But I, uh, you know, when you start eating real food after not eating real food for a couple of days, it kind of messes with you a little bit. This is an ongoing segment in the podcast called Danny's Digestion. Have we, I don't know. Danny's Digestion? I don't like that. That's Just not, go with it. Okay. Well, I'll go with it. Sure. Uh, yeah. They're, juice cleanses are fun, but they're not that much fun. But they can be fun if you do it right. So anything is fun when you do it for three days straight. Well, that's true. Day day one was hard. Day two was like pleasantly surprised, and day three is like I could do this forever. You uh, got there. You finally got. I guess that's I, the point. I finally got there. The hardest thing though is on the last day of the juice cleanse. If you go to the farmers market at, at Grand Army Plaza and you can't eat anything because you're still juicing, and you see everybody, you know, all the people with their different apples, like, have a slice of apple. No, I can't eat it, sir. I did some dumpster diving back in the day. Not a ton of dump... <laughs> not, not a ton of dumpster diving. I don't know diving. how that relates to anything, but... <laughs> because at the farmer's market, they have the compost drop-off, so I wonder if you, in a food-crazed state, was just like... Com oh, com no, 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 no. Like no. Zombie the food. The difference you between composting that. food and free samples are the toothpicks. I, the usually that's usually the one giveaway or two weeks to the difference between <laughs> <laughs> food samples and uh, compost. Yeah. Well, that was hard. And the and even harder was because it's the even harder was getting the toothpicks out of your gullet. No, no, I didn't eat any because I'm a, I was doing it for real, Michael. I don't I'm not cheating. I if you cheat, oh god, see, I I cheat on myself. If I do that, you know, and I don't want to because it, it's important. Is it's, this like flying across the country to watch a football game just to leave before it starts? Wow. Oh, a little political there, huh? No, I mean, like, you went to the farmer's market to say, I don't No, I went to the food. farmer's market to get foods that I knew I was going to eat the next day in the, in, the, in the days after that because that was the last day of the juice cleanse. Okay, I do have right? a relationship with my bacon dealer at the farmer's market where, <laughs> <laughs> owing to my cholesterol numbers, I can only have one pound of bacon a month. Okay. And so that works out to one rasher per week. Does he know you by name? She, she uh, excuse me, very real. I'm, I feel bad about myself now. Sorry. She and I, she and I have actually worked out a version of Bone Thugs and Harmony that first of the month that's all about bacon. Can you sing that for us right now? Wake up, wake up. And what? It's the first of the month. No, there's and then, a, yeah, and there's that's some it. no. There's some other lyrics that we've been working on, but I also get eggs. Are you just you're scared because someone's gonna steal your idea for the bacon song? It's, it's rife with parody right there. Bacon dollar ideas only only on the podcast. <laughs> I, she's she she was great, and uh, and I got my bacon. I got a dozen eggs, and 
Sometimes when I bring the kid, I go, that's daddy's bacon dealer. Oh, man. Teaching him young, huh? Interesting. I was trying to pull up the uh, instrumental version of Bone Thugs and Harmony, but it's... Uh... Oh, it's uh, it's copyrighted, and, and, and we're moving. And we're it's moving uh, on. not worth it. <laughs> I was trying to give Michael a platform. I think to I mean that doesn't even sound like the yeah, song. Yeah, I was going to so say I think that's continue. the karaoke version. This is, of the, this is the chorus. Is that what you made up? No, it's he said it's the first of them. Anyway, that's the wow. Chorus. We have totally derailed on Bone Thugs and Harmony uh. and Bacon Rashers. I just heard rash, really. I get, you know, bacon rash. And you broke out immediately. That's true. Yeah, if I, on my juice cleanse, if I saw bacon, I probably speaking, would have speaking broken Speaking of medical rash. foibles, my son has hand, foot, and mouth disease. Which Is that I true right now? In other, in oh. other uh, like, species, I think that breaks down to hoof and mouth disease. But I think in a human, it's the hoof. They so gotta... should, we, should we close this place down? Are you contagious? <laughs> What the hell? That's your microphone, and you get to take it home tonight with you and wash it. I didn't say he, my son had hepatitis A. I said hand, foot, and mouth. We've take, we've, you've been, been a while for the hepatitis what? jokes. You did A, B, and C. You almost No, no, no. I was only the CDC the spokesperson for hepatitis B from 1998 to 2000, okay? You were like I've, I've I've told enough kids across the country to get their vaccines. All you, right. You finished third in the uh, World Cup mascot balloting. You were happy. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the adorable stuffed mascot, the adorable <laughs> liver liver shaped plushie. The the happy happy plushes were traded after that, like Olympic pins at at uh, <laughs> World Cups every four years after that. Wow. Happy. Oh. Hey, someone should make a pin. I'll, I'd wear so, it. So, yeah, he has hand, foot, it. and mouth disease, which was weird uh, until... It was weird until I found out that it's caused by the Coxsackie virus, which is great because I immediately said, New York State. I got Co arrested in that town. Coxsackie, New York. Yeah, for real. Okay. I hate that place. Every time I drive up 87, I give the big finger to that sign. True. True did story. You, I was 19 name, years old. It wasn't for anything. Did important. you name the virus after this in no. a fit of peak? No. Was no. But now fake? I'm having flashbacks to the whole thing, and I don't like. I, I don't like this place I'm in right now. My <laughs> internal monologue is going crazy. Uh, so really is hate his autoimmune system. Well, you know, it's funny that uh, you know your son was is not feeling well, and. Uh, I was. I hardly hilarious. thought it. Right. Yeah. Here's, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's great. I'm really sorry about that. Um, no, he's okay. Right? He's okay. I hope so. It's a little. He's just a little itchy. He's not at the. Sh is he here tonight, Gerard? No, he's not here. <laughs> Jerry, say one of. We would have heard crying. We would have heard crying. Already. Um, I had a, a an accident that happened while we were on the juice cleanse. That my fiance ended up feeding me twice the dosage of uh, B complex in a night that really scared her more than I because I was like, it's a vitamin. What's it going to do? Then I Googled it. And if you, you can overdose on vitamin B and it's real bad for you, you get nerve damage and all sorts of stuff. Uh, However, there is one vitamin B that you can overdose on and that's riboflavin. Oh, hey, is it not? I don't know. Is that, is that vitamin B? Is riboflavin vitamin B? K, I was kind of leaning on you for this one. I don't believe that. <laughs> it is? Okay. Well, I didn't need enough of that, Fact. but it was a B complex, so there's Check. probably some riboflavin in this pill. And you need it for the events taking place this weekend. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We turned the, the clocks back. Yes. It's time travel. Time travel stuff. You're, okay, you're, okay. you're, getting, you're getting into the Pete and Pete thing. I get I'm it. Moving we, on. We were on that TV show together. Do you know that? <laughs> yeah. If if it's not on mobile, I haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, but it's, no, yeah. it's not. It's not. No, we haven't seen any of those uh, residuals. Wait till they come buy in. Viacom, I yeah. guess. Uh -huh. um, but in a panic, she called the the poison control because she thought that we were going to die or something. So I, for the first time, probably. Ever, I don't think I've ever tried to make myself vomit, but I had to stick my finger down my throat because I was what? thought that I was going to get sick. But you haven't eaten anything in three days, so there's nothing in there. It's terrible. I popped my blood vessels in my eyeballs and all sorts of stuff. I... Yeah, it was terrible. The, 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 no, the big kicker was, though, we c 
you should have called poison control before you told me to stick my finger down my throat to vomit because poison control said, you're going to pee it out. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. Get some sleep. You know, not fun. But, you know, I, sh- I, shit happens. I thought you making yourself vomit was the genesis of this podcast. <laughs> uh, Remember, that's I just can't... Regurg- no, it's, there's I a can't... difference between vomiting and regurgitating. No, I walked out, you know, I walked out of the park and where my soccer stuff, in between two cars, there's you leaning oh, over. Oh, God, don't tell this story. Dehydrated as hell. The good old days. Yeah, I'm, I ran into Mike playing soccer outside of a McCarran pool and I wasn't feeling very well because I was probably booze sick. And, you and I showed, and I showed him that I was booze sick. Yeah. The only way you knew how? Through? Projecting. Yes. Well, because, you know, I, I, have an, I have a background in acting, so I was projecting. Right. I did, I did do some theater work at Circle in the Square Theater. You but, have to project in that room. It's very hard. So uh, that, I think, got the ball rolling towards uh, where we all are now, right? That's great. The vomit. Yeah. Hey, Jeremy, can we can we move along? <laughs> yeah, I was just uh, waiting for an end for that story. Yeah, you've been really uh, quiet. I have, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about my own dumpster diving stories and vomit stories. Actually, the two podcasts ago, I talked about vomiting in the ocean uh, underwater, which is like a... Yeah, while we were swimming next to yeah. him. That's disgusting. Hey, yeah, yeah, that was weird. No, 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 no. I did I, leave early. Uh, yes, it is true, but I, was, I made sure to move my body downstream or whatever that's yeah, called. Yeah, but not our bodies. Downstream, the water goes back and forth in, a, in the ocean. You know what I mean? No, no, no. I'm telling you that the the undercurrent. Oh, was it was definitely downstream. Day. Yeah. You ever heard of rip tide? Very man? strong. All right, so uh, yeah, let's move this along. How about yeah, that? Please move it along. Uh, speaking of acting and uh, having a background in that such thing, uh, we usually pull videos from uh, when these young men were even younger, and uh, we thought maybe we'd show them if you guys want to take a look at them. What do you think? All right, Tamborelli, you're up first. You ready? Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> the more you know. Works. No fail magic you can master in minutes. This, my friends, is clean cut. I will <laughs> magically cut a solid piece of rope and put it back together. Give me that. It's real. Watch closely. I place the rope into this magical holder, cut, cut, and magically restore it like new. Wow. That's unbelievable. That's impossible. That's right. It's magic. Clean Cut comes with everything you see here. Other tricks in the Magic Works collection sold separately. It's magic. It's magic. It's magic. Wow. Well, you can tell that I had not gone through puberty at that point in my life. (laughs) I don't know. Well, I... I went through puberty four years ago, so... (laughs) Do the math. Yeah. I don't know. I was probably 12... We shot that in a pizza parlor in Hoboken, New Jersey. I got paid in pizza. And you know what? That 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 tough guy kid that pulled that string was like, it's real. He worked. He was there. a real tough guy. He was a real prick. That kid. <laughs> if I remember, you don't really I remember have to, correctly. He you was, don't have to denigrate Aldo. Okay, he was the son of the delivery guy, and he, he was hanging been. out in the pizzeria he, <laughs> with nothing to do. Did you realize that he was in eighth grade and he was nineteen? I didn't. I didn't notice that. So don't. I just remembered him being really n- nasty to me. Like he thought I was, you know, he was too cool for school to hang out with me. Just because, you he know, he was too school, I was cool the, for school. He dropped out. I was the principal in that commercial, you know. Like, so like, like he G- should have been respecting me. Like Jim Belushi, the principal. No, you know, like a principal actor. Oh, so I thought you meant like riding ter- your motorcycle. He's been out a long stairs. time. Maybe you've been. Maybe you heard. I don't do shines I don't, I don't no more. Shine shoes no more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my my question uh, after watching all these is: Did you get to keep the magic toy? No, I didn't get to keep the magic toy. I know. You're pretty. It was a crap. It was a crappy thing. That's I, it impossible. It was a real. No, it's not impossible. It's magic. It's magic. It's pretty good. You actually, you can still hit that note. It's I was, good. I when was are gonna you going to go through puberty? I when was going to say, if, we, <laughs> if you listen to the podcast at double speed, Dan actually does all that dialogue <laughs> from the commercial. That's true. Very true. Uh, but yeah, so didn't get to keep the toy. That kid was a prick. It was a uh, Hoboken pizzeria. And, uh, you know. It's Wait, forever you on the, YouTube. There was a so time. So everyone can look at it and laugh at me. There was a time in kids' lives when they just 
they deliberately wore hats backwards. <laughs> true. <laughs> it's very true. They like they, they didn't like put it on forwards and then, you know, swivel it around. See, I'll try it this way. They put it on backwards from the beginning and then walked out of the house. I did that. <laughs> you still do it. What? Don't lie. I've seen you walk around like that. Yeah, see? <laughs> I've caught I've caught him. It's the last in time his I own s- lie. It's the last time I sublet from you. <laughs> Uh, well, well, Michael, do you, do you want to see yours? Yeah, I think it's time to uh, switch gears. Who wants to like... see Mike's video? Okay. All right, well, here we go. I don't know if I want to see this. Come with me. I remember this. All right, Mr. P. You ready to start? Show me email. Okay, let's light this candle. I want to see eBay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like that, you're riding the wave of the future, my man. Now, what do you feel like buying? I want to buy a smoke town. Excellent choice. Right, you're there. You're almost there. How many are you going to buy? Wait, wait a minute. What's the problem? Chicken? What does it cost? Name your own price, my man. (laughs) Oh, well, we're stocking for winter. Let's do it. Yahtzee. All right, you did it, my man. (laughs) Give it up for Michael C. And the president, former president Bill Clinton. You don't no have. Less. You don't have to give it up. Uh, did he ad lib Yahtzee, or was that was yeah, that something that was that was my one big question? They scripted a lot of that stuff. Did they script your dance? <laughs> <laughs> they haven't invented a notation for that dance yet. You can't. You can't put that in in print. Wait, is that the uh, is that the SNL guy dance? Is that the um, Gilbert? No. You felt I was doing an wow. Ed. You thought I was doing Ed, an Ed, Ed, Ed Grimley? Ed, Ed, Ed. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You thought I was doing an Ed Grimley. I kind of, it was a, you had a, a bit of Ed Grimley in there. Not bad. A bit of I mean, constipation I, in there. A bit yeah, of, uh, I just didn't think he needed to constantly reassure himself like Ed Grimley. I think the characters are totally <laughs> different. <laughs> but I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. Michael's stolen a lot of stuff from a lot of people over the years. I stolen I stole Dan's great line from uh from Pete and Pete let's light this candle I think he says it in the night crawlers uh episode right do you say it in the night yeah, crawlers episode I, you know yeah sh- yeah totally so I remember this was, every line from this every was ni- episode that I ever said this was 1990 I remember every line you ever said that's true he's got a really freakish memory this was 1998 and uh I we hadn't done Pete and Pete for a couple of years and I was in college, and this commercial we shot in Terrytown. That re- you mean it wasn't the White House? Ah, uh, spoiler alert, dude! Wait, is that true? No, no, no. We shot the commercial in Terrytown. This was in the White House. Oh, okay. oh thank this, God. this, commer- okay, this, thank this God. White House thing was like a parody of the commercial. Right. Oh, right. Because right, right. this is his actual. Yeah, I went to the White correspondence House. Correspondence dinner. Yeah. It was. Video. It was weird. It was really weird. Well, can you Why was can it you weird, can Michael? you outer monologue your inner monologue that you're remembering right now? So many. Is this a guns. podcast? You there's know? like no. There's like uh, helicopters going. It's like a, a good night. Like you want to see helicopters? I'll show you helicopters. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> <laughs> this has turned into a Goodfellas podcast. I. Uh, I, th- I think I think we've covered this already. All, all of the things, but I definitely remember. Getting a sandwich for free and then the president's dog eating it. Wow. How did that work out? I would like the story. It worked. I mean, we each got half. It was parody. (laughs) (laughs) I left it on a chair that was at his eye level. I I have this thing with dogs. I famously fed dogs by mistake. Uh, Went to a, a cookout and I had brought like all these... Singles, not just slices of cheese, but singles. Craft singles. I don't know if they were a brand name, but they were singles, and I brought them out to the. Could be a brandy hate. Could be a brandy. I did a craft singles commercial. That's why I, I wrote it up. Speaking of, every and then, time I have to say that I left them there instead of putting them on the hamburgers, and a golden retriever was very happy. I fed the dog oh, all the golden cheese. Retrievers. I didn't know. Oh. I didn't know. What if it was like an ugly dog? Would would people oh, yeah. still said ah? Uh... Well, it was craft single, so it was crap cheese anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give them a round of applause for their old videos. How about that? That had nothing to do with anything. Thank you. This episode of The Adventures of Danny and Mike is brought to you by BarkBox. BarkBox is a unique subscription service that delivers four to six natural treats and super fun toys to that favorite dog in your life. Here's how it works. 
Go to BarkBox.com slash Danny and Mike. That's Danny and Mike with the and spelled out. And choose your dog size. Small and cute. Maybe you have a just right size dog or maybe a big and bold size dog. Next, you choose your plan. You can do one month, six months, or 12 months. Now, if you get the six or 12 month plan, which I obviously recommend, you automatically get a free month right off the top. You can cancel at any time, and shipping is always free. Now, Bark Boxes are shipped on the 15th of each month, so you really want to get your cameras ready for when that box arrives because it is a thing to behold. Now, we're big dog lovers here at the Adventures of Danny and Mike. I have a family dog, a Red Boone Coonhound named Rufus, and the Tamborellis have a couple Jack Russell Terriers, Tucker and Harvey. Keep looking on social media. We'll be uploading uh, photos and videos of these pups opening their Bark Boxes. We can't wait to see that. So that's it. Head over to BarkBox.com slash Danny and Mike. And before, before we uh, we move on uh, to our guest, uh, I, we do have one more video to show. Wait, what do you mean you have one more video? Got one, got one more video. I thought maybe uh, you find folks would want to see. You want to see it? Yeah. All right, here we go. Going home feels good. Going home feels good. Man, I can't wait to get home. Gonna order a pizza pie for me, myself, and I. Man, I can't wait to get home. All right, Mr. Traffic Light. Get ready, get set, green. Get ready, get set, green. Get ready, get set, green! Get ready, get set, green! Green? All right, Mr. Traffic Light. Get ready. Get set. Green. Maybe it's broken. All clear on the western front. So why don't we eat this puppy back into neutral? <laughs> hey, that's just safe driving. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Why are you trying to kill my soul? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's get him on the stage, our guest, Mr. Damien Young. He'll fix that for welcome, you. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Hi, Damien. Uh, wow, that was wow. great to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that in such a long time. <laughs> oh, you do really well uh, doing scenes. You don't always need another actor to work with, and that was that was a really good example I of hate that. Working with other people, they are the worst. <laughs> I was an actor for a long time, and I got into documentaries because I hate actors. You have to listen to them and oh. react, and oh, it's just not good. Who wants to react? <laughs> really? Yeah, I'd rather just act. <laughs> yeah, we could see your breath um, in that clip. Uh, was it cold on the bus? Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, I know. I forgot. It was uh, really cold uh, towards the end of the seasons, right? I mean, it was. Um, yeah, I, and then there was something outside when I tried to change the traffic light, or I, I don't know. I just remember like having to be outside, and I think there was pizza at the end. Definitely pizza. Ooh. <laughs> I remember the pizza mostly. Yeah. I always remember the pizza. Yeah, mostly. I just know about pizza. Um, my God, I have such an enormous chin. I really use that to um, <laughs> existential angst effect there. <laughs> was, was that Spiller or Inwood? Oh, God, that I can't that was, that was John was that Inwood. John Inwood? Yeah, that was the last season. But interesting story, of course. That's one of the days where I scratched John Inwood's cornea with an ice ball. So... Oh, wow. Well, last it's episode. never good to scratch a DP's cornea. Yeah, because that was the last, that was the last episode of the show, right? That was Saturday? Yes. Is that what it was? I don't know. It was Saturday. Um, it, was, it, it was the last episode of the, of the season. So All the seasons. I remember that we finished the show <laughs> with a substitute director of photography, Mott, Mott Hupfeld, because... 
because I scratched John Inwood's eye with a <laughs> ice ball. Like a, he's, I'm, I'm glad that you remember it because he's, I, da- I he's Damien's height. He ducked into it. I threw it at his waist and he ducked into it. <laughs> well, it was his fault then. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, You're totally fine. The union covers that. Your own, your own guy sold you out, Inwood. I'm sorry. Your own fellow tall guy. Did you have to learn how to drive the bus? Um, Did they make you put it into gear ever? I don't. No, I didn't drive that bus. I couldn't have done. I, I couldn't have figured it out. Hey, I was Look, a young kid. I thought. I thought it was all movie magic to me, dude, man. So <laughs> just, just the diameter of that steering wheel would have blown your mind. I mean, yeah. the thing was like out to here. They did all those shots where Damien's just like, Gah. right. Um, no, there's no way I drove that, especially with you guys. No, on, on board. <laughs> uh, you no. know, or anybody. It was, it, it was the early '90s. I mean, the social workers were really not always there. <laughs> it was. Um, <laughs> there must... Things could happen. They weren't really sure exactly what had happened. I mean, but... the bus moved. It did right. move. Okay. You so... did. You did put it into gear in that shot. But was there like a mock-up of a bus? Where no. No, was... that was a real bus that just sat on the street for right. days did upon the shiny days. Happy people sort of moving uh, the crank, cranking really, scenery. Really pissed off the neighbors, <laughs> particularly I, on a Saturday. Yeah. I happen to know that you you have to have a license, a driver's license to drive a bus, obviously. But if you want to have kids in that bus, you have to have a CDL. You have so have that, another, that, it's, that, a, it's a third license. You have so to have a driver's license. And being, right. being an actor doesn't supersede all that? <laughs> no. Well... <laughs> I mean, it's a good point. It, maybe it it's should. A, it's a CDL if you want to. Do you, is there, you have that. a card or something you can flash? <laughs> we can just show that clip, I guess, when you just be like, no, 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 I've no, been no, in a I'm bus cool. before. Like, no, 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 no. Totally. Video business card. <laughs> this, it's me. Uh, Damien does. I, I, I'm, I'm really on a lot of pressure here, Damien, because of your most perfect interviewer character from Kate Berlant's The Characters for Netflix. It oh, was my favorite of the last <laughs> few years. Of you, you inter- there's, I always feel so much pressure trying to interview somebody because I'm always thinking about your interview of Kate Berlant wow. from that, uh, from wow. that part. That was fun. I mean, they're, um, you know, she's, she improvs. Well, there was a script um, which she did not even a, uh, begin to do so it's kind of, um, it, was a, it was a decoy in other words you got well i guess so and i guess the thing with stuff like that is you feel like um i'm i was just the, i'm the guest so i'm just gonna stick to the script and then when we go off we go off um so we went off immediately and <laughs> but she wrote the thing and so she had many many drafts tucked away in her head that she could draw upon to, you know, improv the thing. And I, I didn't have anything. Didn't done. share any with you. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, I'm sure what cut together was basically the script. That usually happens is let's have a little fun for an hour and a half and then do what we got in the first. So, I don't know. <laughs> very well, interesting. Yeah. It's it's made Michael very tepid. Oh, my oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> timid, timid, not tepid. I'm I'm warmer than that. No, it, it's it's really one of my favorites. Of course, Henry Zabrowski's is great too. Yeah, Henry's is really good. Uh, there's a there's a few in there that are really good, but yeah, there's a lot of pressure on when uh, Damien's uh, interviewing her, and she's so weird. Yeah, she's weird. <laughs> no, I mean <laughs> the best. She's yeah. super funny. I yeah, think people no, I think people love Damien because he's able to play himself in all these different. Uh, roll. Okay, now we're getting really analytical. No. <laughs> oh, you want to break down the craft? <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, I think for me, it starts with the process. It starts with the process. Well, it's process. It's craft. Um, it's the art. Yeah, it's the art. A R T. It comes down when we get to. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know. You guys, I don't know. Well, how, what do you think? Do actors play, always play themselves, or? Hmm. Um. Uh, 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 I mean, I was, I was, I was, I was seven to thirteen years old. I'm not really sure. Oh, I'm not. I, I wasn't whoa, completely whoa, whoa, whoa. developed yet. So, 
basically Will and Chris and, and whoever else was writing was basic, you know, was human, shaping human my life in that moment. Modeling. In real time. Inedible Play-Doh. You know, I would go back to public school and oh, I like, try to fight so, and, you know. So your real lives uh, were playing the real people that were developed for you when you were on TV. <laughs> This is the this is the first this is the first free therapy session I've ever had. I mean, if you'd like to get Thank into that. Thank you so much. It's like I'm growing instead in of therapy a, for years. I could help. It's like the old West World, and I'm growing instead of a plastic mold that I'm trying to. Like, yeah, I had a few I more years before I started acting, so you know, I had something to bounce off of. But you know, I don't know. as well, as a young striver coming out of Kenyon College in Gambier, Ohio. Wow. Nice. I told you I have a good memory. Wow. Um, is it a good memory or is it an IMDb check? <laughs> no, I don't uh, think it's. I don't know. Damien. I mean, Damien they have knows, all those fun facts on IMDb. Like, no, you Damien went to knows that he. Damien knows that he told me that once five years. I did. Five years ago. And I didn't graduate, so it's probably on no record anywhere. So. Wow, you guys are the same. But now you all know. Drop out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You would uh, you would do some theater back in the day. Did some theater. Continue to do the theater. It's my roots. Um, I'd like to get back to it. I'm doing a play right now, and my character's name is Stu. Well, oh. I don't have a last name, so I always imagine. Yeah, um, it's Benedict. Um, I would think it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did, did a lot of plays in, in college, and um, you know, came to New York. So. That's how you do it, I guess. I don't know what people do now. They get on their social media <laughs> and become influencers. Hey, that's another word. And an influencers. We'll following. have a 3D star soon who just like started doing 3D, and that's how they broke into <laughs> plays after that. Really? I don't know. Do people go from being an influencer to doing off-Broadway? I don't think that happens. Uh, Sometimes, you, you on rare a, occasions. <laughs> go, I, I'm pretty sure it goes influencer, thought leader, disruptor, and then president. president. <laughs> <laughs> and then off-Broadway. Uh, and then off-Broadway. Uh. Actually, that's what I thought when I first came to New York. I thought, uh, the only way I can get a really good part in an off-Broadway play was to become a TV star. Um <laughs> And, uh, I was thinking drug addict, but <laughs> I totally get, I get it. Oh. Um, so it didn't quite work out that way. But, um, you know, there were a lot of stars doing off-Broadway when I was coming up. So anyway, that's how, what I thought. Uh, but how did you end up in Law & Order? You, somebody's going to see you in a place somewhere. <laughs> You, know um, I mean? you just have to be a New York City resident at some point, yeah. and you get to be on Law Non-s- and Order. Nonsense. <laughs> it just like, happens. I see at least 25 people here who have not been in Law and Order. Yet. I don't know. Well, they're not trying hard enough, Michael. <laughs> I get It's there. It's not like the offices have moved the last 20 years, guys. It's a stationary target. You know? I guess it must be the same in Chicago now. Everybody is in Chicago helping people. Um, shows um. <laughs> Chicago <laughs> oh, Fire, Chicago Fire, yeah. Chicago Hope, and then Chicago Social, which is the newest one. The Chicago Social? Uh, no, they cut hmm. the government there, so there's no social work. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, it, is a, it is a bankrupt state. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just lost the state of Illinois. Wow. They stopped listening to the podcast. You can Thank do you, uh, you could do things with film like the. The intercut between Damien and the red light that you, it's tough to do in the theater the same way. Yes. And, and my wife and I were just talking about that this morning. What? <laughs> and what, one of the best uh, examples of Damien not needing anybody uh, to in any humans to interact with is in uh, Amateur where he, he really loves a soda machine. Has anybody seen this scene i obviously i have uh am i the only one you're talking about am i the only one in the am i the only one in in the the room who's watched damien young love i saw the machine in the film amateur cry of recognition man well (laughs) an email will go out tonight for all of you who bought tickets in advance because we have your email address we got dvd yeah we got dvds (laughs) for everybody (laughs) Woo. 
How hard? Uh, yeah, you didn't. You didn't need people. There was just like a soda machine and your no, and your I body. Had a, I had a little thing with pizza and the soda machine and the cigarette. Afterwards, God, it's like a perfect as you do tr- tr- yeah. Trinity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a, a, a Manhattan Trinity right there. The- oh, you got. A- Oh, that's true. <laughs> was it true that it used to be that a pack of cigarettes was always the same price as a slice of pizza? No, it was a subway f- a subway ride. Oh, okay. You can't, but they don't tax the sub. They, I guess the subway is taxed. You just have to wait an hour to take a half hour trip. You hmm. don't. You don't pay it the same Interesting way. Interesting hypothesis. Wow, no, I mean a, that's like time or something. Well, yeah. cigarettes are like twenty dollars. The the subway fare is still two seventy five, but what it costs you is in panic. In time, oh. I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Sometimes, is, Damien. Sometimes it takes a minute or two to understand what Mike's saying, but he usually I, comes around. Sometimes 80% years. Of the time. <laughs> I thought you were. Of the time I thought you were commodifying mon- uh, time, and I was. I was interested You're in into where that. you were going to go with that. But uh, mm. we we'll, we'll work on that for okay. next time. <laughs> You're thinking about it, though. Oh, we Look get to that. do. I guess we do get to do this once more this year. Yeah, we do. We get to do it one more time this year, Michael. And Damon, you're welcome to come back oh, to be. Well, to, you know, having a great time. He's been our closest guest uh, <laughs> geographically. Oh yeah, I live True. in the neighborhood. Between him, between him and I Glazer. walked here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, did you feel happy, sad, didn't really care, or you had feelings about working on a? children's show when you first got on it oh man i loved it curious. and it what didn't really have anything to do with children um uh it was um it was playland you know i got to i got to be over the top ridiculous character on television um or and that's you don't get to do that i mean i got to do that a lot when i was um doing my downtown fucked up theater but um not not on TV and it was you know from everybody all the props people and the set dressing and uh, Chris and Will everybody was encouraging like no be weirder there are um, a lot of downtown fucked up people <laughs> on our show yeah. we didn't hire anybody from above 14th street I think was the rule <laughs> uh, post 1990 <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, just that scene we saw, I wouldn't be, I'd, you know, I wouldn't be allowed to do that in any other venue that was recorded by a camera. And, and uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it was just too big and crazy. So, no, I I loved it, man. That was great. Well, we loved it, too. Yeah. Oh, we, good. You weren't the only one loving it. Oh, thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it weird when you punched through that cake that had my face on it in that episode. <laughs> oh yeah. Um uh, with the uh with the whisk. Yeah, 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 you had the whole Yeah, and then um yeah, no that was fun. You had the toque on, right? Did you have the toque on? The, I sh- ha- the chef, yes. the chefs. And I had the whisk and I had it was um I I uttered the bus driver's code like like <laughs> courtesy, See, respect, <laughs> like timeliness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, niceness or yeah. something because you riboflavin be- because you betrayed me. I betray. Oh, yeah, and you called me a Judas. I remember oh, yeah. you calling me a Judas. Oh, and then I got to run through the neighborhood holding the whisk like it was some like an Olympic torch. And you busted through the thing. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. those were the days. Yeah, yeah. That was we great. we went back to South Orange to shoot like a little short for. Uh, great big story that CNN thing that they do and they like brought us back they're like how does it feel to be back oh, we're like oh this is kind of weird and the people across the street from the house were like pulling in and they saw cameras like looking at the uh, at the <gasps> she's just you're, <laughs> not gonna, you're not gonna be here all and day they, are she you? like went right into like she had like PTSD it was like immediately oh, really? like <laughs> you guys aren't gonna be here forever are you because you guys were terrible I hated you <laughs> and like went right right it, into it like it was as if do you remember Intervening 26 you years that never happened. Who was, you know, he told me he was going to give me money and he didn't give me money and like Yikes. all these things. And we were like, look, lady, we were kids. Like, I don't, I had nothing to do with anything. 
right. I'm just here because you know this is a, a fun little gag. I, I said to her. I said to her. A small locations payment invi- invested wisely in 1993 could be worth so much today. <laughs> wow. God, she was mad. Yeah, she was mad. But but then we got the other end of that where the the woman haunted who, house the lady. haunted house that was next to the Wrigley house. She came out and she was like, "He wasn't in that episode." You guys are great. Like he wasn't Aww. bad. She was just mad because she didn't she didn't speak up for herself. <laughs> I was the only we had that town meeting an emergency town meeting to talk about the show it's like wow and yeah it was like yeah three billboards South outside Orange, South New Jersey was next, yeah God, I had no idea I just thought everybody loved that yeah I thought so I, that's how I thought too <laughs> we were we were, we were in a bubble here. we were, we were in a nice, as we were in liberators a nice yeah they gave bubble. us flowers and <laughs> yeah it happens yeah New Jersey's favorite son come home. That's you, Dan. That's not uh, that, yeah, Damien. I don't I think Damien's from New Jersey. Where you... No, I grew up in D.C. I remember. Now I remember having a talk with you in uh, Del Marvelous. Wow. <laughs> Prime. <laughs> Respect the Bay. Clean it up. Yeah. You know, when I'm driving around the PA Maryland and I see uh, that you're still in the Chesapeake watershed and you're like 500 miles away. I don't understand how that works, Grab but you know, the, the, it's, it's, re- it's very large the Chesapeake Bay the watershed. Ah, uh, okay. And they're like fingers. Uh, and they, and yeah, they, they go, go everywhere. Up, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. <laughs> this has been Danny's water moment. Hey, uh, you brought know, to you by... I do a lot of driving these days. <laughs> How old were your kids <laughs> when you met us? I was trying to remember that. What, what was the first season? It was 1990. I want to say 92, 91. Then they something didn't, like that. They didn't so, exist yet. My, my daughter was born in 95. So ah, I think I was just it. childless for well, the she whole was, thing. She was a child while you were having a face off with the traffic light. Um, maybe, maybe a baby. She was an infant. Oh, okay, right. I don't know. I can't. This is, those are some early times um, with babies. You know, I don't know. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> That's a blur. Um, did any of them have hand, foot, and mouth disease? No, you know. Oh, gosh. When yeah, I heard he you say that, he needs some advice. He I needs thought, some fatherly advice. That up, no, then... I was sure that that had been eradicated. I didn't know Jeez. kids still got that. Yeah, I thought, I don't know. Everybody seemed to confirm, no, that's a real thing. You better check that out. So, well, I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was a big joke, but... We, uh, st- we used to shoot up our kids with coffee at that point. This was way back. No, no, I, one, I didn't that. do that. No. no, that's just your method. Um, <laughs> don't rope me into that. <laughs> no, just a little bourbon on the teeth, too. <laughs> Doesn't hurt, you know. Get them, yeah. There goes right to sleep. That's how we did it. You're gonna have to learn these sort of tricks to get kids to stay up all night or go to sleep. I can't. Which one do you want them to do? You want them to sleep as much as possible. Mm. Like what if, if you have a 16 hour day too. sleeper, you're that's what you want. So a cat, basically. You yeah. want a cat. You or you want a cat or a sloth. <laughs> you want a hairless cat who can't uh, move anywhere and is used to diapers. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. Yeah. You don't use kitty litter for the, for no. the kid. No, um, but you know. Did your you kid just... get into kitty litter? Is that how he got hand, foot no, and mouth? I would assume that mouth? he got it from other other hooves, the hooves of other 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 children. Uh, well, kids. I other would, mutants. Yeah, baby goats that he was playing around with. <laughs> Jeez. Interesting. You're providing, a lot, you're providing your son with an enriching environment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's compost you rich. You find it's, a lot of stuff in Greenpoint. Yeah. All right. This is, this is an urban farm. Hey, I'll actually, be back tomorrow. Actually, his lead level is kind of high. We could uh, abate, abate oh, that. Boy. Wow. Yeah. Well, we took care of that in the 70s, right? Jeez. Yeah, except for those landlords that haven't done anything about it since the 70s. Landlords. Damn it. Uh, in closing, uh, the rent is too damn high. Damien Young. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Damien. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Damien Young. Thank you. Uh, 
what is what is the name of the show, Damien? Oh yeah, can you give us give us some plugs? Oh yeah, you go? we some need some plugs. plugs. Let's, let's, let's get Damien Young back to the stage. Hey, Damien Young! Oh, hey, Damien Young! It's a great uh, it's a great show. It's written uh, by Teresa Rebeck. It's called What We're Up Against. Um, and it's set in 1992. It's gender politics in the workplace. Um, and I play douchebag number one. So, um, and it's at the Women's Project. Um, so if you want to check it out, just uh, find the Women's Project website. And uh, we open on Wednesday. So. Very cool. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Oh, thank you, Damien. Yes. Mr. Danny Tamborelli. Hey, thank you. Mr. Michael C. Morona. And Mr. Damien Young. Damien Young. Young. Yes. Yeah. Come uh, back, have, you all. Come back in December, December 3rd. We'll be we, back right We now. have a producer, Jeremy. He's Hello. Yeah. The Adventures of Danny and Mike stars Danny Tamborelli and Michael C. Marona. The show is produced by Jeremy Balin. The podcast is part of the Feral Audio Podcasting Collective and can be found on their website at feralaudio.com. For more information on the guys, visit our website at dannyandmike.com. Also, look us up on Twitter, at Danny and Mike, with the N spelled out, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash the adventures of Danny and Mike. Thanks for listening. <laughs>